So bronze match well, is starting on. It's a lot of spectators. Map. Starts on frostbite, another map I haven't seen. Ever actually, Cold Snap I had seen. Frostbite's new to me. It's like adamantine mountain, but snowy. Frostbite, I haven't seen this one in a while. So anyway, I'm so once again Prince Reaper gets one last chance to do something. And Manu and Julian are Okay, Princey apparently has a sore finger. I can totally understand. But at the same time, if we go to finals, it's basically just no bronze match. That's a lot of mean. Hmm. Oh, yeah, so it is. Clone Julian Manu. <laughs> Inter-clan rivalry. That's all they have. It's, well, Clone is one meme machine versus two, with Princey at their side. Well, anyway. Looks like Prince Princey's doing getting some biological stuff handled, and then we're going on to Frostbite. 16 by 8 map, so relatively large. Kinda hilly. Very high center area from what I can tell. Oh, why is maps? Go to other music. So I'm thinking. Manu and Julian are probably going to take it. I mean, Princey's mistakes against the flip in the Flips of Norm game... I mean, Flips of Norm still won. And... Even then, it was like, the mistakes were kind of evened out. At this point, it's... Manu and Julian... Hey, with Manu and Julian, it's going to be... It's just not going to have any easy way of getting in. Like, Prince Reaper's going to have to really push it. If they don't, then it's going to be game pretty quick. So let's check out this map now. See what it's like. Oops. You have a big island in the center. Oh, that was an I Oh, wow, it's a sea map. Not a whole lot yeah, underwater, it, though. It's, it's a really weird map. It's ideal for all sorts of amphibious units. Wow, and you can start on the island, too. That's kind yep. of neat. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Depends on how you set up the start boxes, because in a lot of games I played, uh, you weren't allowed to start on the island. Oh. Hmm. You either started on one of the small islands or the free cluster, max, max cluster. In Underwater, the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. How are we going to start? Well, Julian going for defensive air, which actually makes a lot of sense. Although, admittedly, C now can go all the way around. And C is pretty powerful. This is actually the first C-supporting map we've seen so far. Mm hmm Indeed. And I don't know... How I haven't seen Manu and Julian play at all, so I haven't seen them play with the new C. And Clone going on the island, being very forward. Kind of unlike themselves, but hey, they're being forward. I'm okay with that. So Julian is forward. I just realized I probably should lower the text shadow. Be right back. Okay. And where is Manu? Manu's got to be somewhere around here. Well, not here. Over on the east side of the map. They're going to go for a forward strategy or what? Yes, they are. Forward strategy indeed. Forward amphib. Interesting. So forward with the opportunity to defend back. The game has begun. Clone going for amphib forward as well. While amphib in C for Princey. So double amphib. Conch as well coming from both. I mean, that's not bad. 7.5 metal, that's not bad. Get a tiny bit of reclaim too for energy, but not much. Neither player really going for it too heavily. This island is so small though. It's gonna be tricky to really fight on it. It's not quite ice. Actually, 
I think it is icy run size now that I think about it. Or slightly, no, it's slightly, slightly taller. bigger. Slightly taller, certainly. 16 by 8 is quite a big tunnel. Yeah, but then the, I mean, the island in the center. Oh, yeah. yeah that's yeah. probably maybe 12 by 4 at most, or 10 by 4 at most. Both players want to have ducks in the center. But clone able to keep them alive a bit better. Very slightly. Basically just got lucky, honestly. Ducks are weird. But a duck going around from Princey duck, around duck get back. Lucky. Trying to see if they get maybe they're starting to see if they can find Julian's base, trying to see if they can find Manu's base. At this point, neither Clone nor Princey know where their opponents are. I mean, Manu is obviously on the island. There's it's very likely the case. But it's not too obvious about Princey. Sorry, about Julian. So Princey, where are they exploring? They're exploring around. Maybe they assume that Julian's in the water. Mm -hmm. See what happens there. And Hacksaw coming in. So Julian, known to be going for air. Hacksaw coming up just to deal with that, which is unusual. No one ever builds a Hacksaw. I wonder if, the, if yeah, he can fire... kind of pork that oh. position and uh, get a, get the bombers. I think that's Ooh, the idea. Hacksaw. How do they work nowadays? I, I don't know. I don't think they've been changed recently. They're Ooh, so that's how fast, it works. Yeah, they, they're faster, cheaper chainsaws, basically, but... I've always really cool. missed them. I like the model a lot. Yeah, I, there have been some rocket launcher trying to make it a bit better, but I, hadn't, I don't think any of them have been put in. Maybe they have. Maybe there was some... I think with Auto War was experimenting with doing some automatic targeting, where any group of hacksaws would target a group of bombers one at a time, rather than targeting them separately, so they try to split fire. I don't know if that was ever put into mainline though. I don't think that, okay. I don't, that might be in production code, but I don't know. I see a scallop. Ooh. And I see a duck doing nothing. But yes, yeah, scallop is. Wait, where? It's duck for dinner. Oh yeah! Wow, Manu's already got that. Manu's already got the right unit, which is good choice, because Clone is continuing to go heavily for duck, duck and angler, because why not? And here, Princey also. Okay, Clone and Princey are not communicating. I think. Like they aren't not really sure. because they're doing the same thing rather than being complimentary. They're trying to just copy each other. Not really sure why. Regardless, anglers are a good idea. There is a decent amount of air coming from Julian, and Julian's probably <coughs> gonna stick with air for a little while longer. Yeah, if he loses these bombers, that's quite a big deal. Well, I think if they lose the bombers, they're gonna switch it to something else. They're gonna switch off. I can't imagine they'll stick with air that obstinately. I like the battle com. With three thousand hit points. Which who's battle com? Just in general. Oh yeah. Okay. Just cannot bomb it that e easily. Yeah, it's four bombs to kill. And if you move to level do... one, do you get the HP? Yeah. I think so. Is it enough to require um five hits? I think it's thirty five hundred, but I'm not sure offhand. Because a lot of people use armor plates. And I mean, if you're going to use a battle comm for, for attacking anything, you're going to use armor plates. You're going to increase your HP mm -hmm. anyway. Okay, now they're being a bit more complimentary with buoys and anglers coming in. <coughs> it would have been really nice if Manu could have managed to uh, send one constructor into the water that could have just taken Maxis indefinitely. That would have been a really There's good so idea. so many Maxis. And, I mean, Princey's done that, as we can see. Princey started on the water. Yeah. But neither Julian nor Manu would... I mean, Julian could do that too. A crane can build. But we do not see any conscious coming... I mean, they're going above ground. They're building up. They're building okay, but no, they're not building underwater. And the duck gonna intercept this conch. That's dead. Bomber's coming in trying to get rid of the metal extractors, but that's not only gonna do so much. And the duck's... Ah, this, is cool. no problem. this is exactly why amphibious bots are cool on maps like these, where you can do the sneak around, pop yep. up, and uh... and then bombers coming in and getting hit anyway. That normally doesn't happen. Normally they evade. And back into the water, the ducks go to heal up and recuperate for another attack. And boys coming in here, trying to trying to get rid of defenders. Actually, able to get rid of defenders, especially being repaired, helps a lot. Wow, it's exactly two hits from a buoy, buoy yep. to kill uh, a defender. I should keep this in mind, because that's pretty awesome. 
Yeah, it is. It makes them very good defender killers. <clears throat> it slows the defender down too, almost completely. After the first hit, if not totally. Yeah, to completely. prevent uh, the reload. Yes. So it basically, just beats defender outright. No, all not. They're quite expensive, right? Three hundred against the uh, eighty metal turret. Yeah, but you could plow through four of them, no problem. Like ping pong, and it's gone. Yeah. Ping pong, and it's gone. Or it misses. That works too. Yeah. Well, it doesn't. It fails horribly. Oh, come on. There we go. No more missing. People take note. Notes. Boys are good against defenders. They smash things real good. And anglers coming in the center. Looks like Julian. Wow. They really want to bomb out the commander, but the anglers are getting in the way. They've got to be yeah. careful. They're. I mean. Princey is trying to be proud for the anglers, but they're actually being a bit risky. They're getting too out of position. That commander's going to die. Clone's commander is about to go down. That is a huge blow. The boys lost the repair. And the anglers did not do their job. Well, yeah, they took down one bomber. They sort of did their job. I mean, there weren't enough anglers to really make it work, but they were out of position anyway. That is unfortunate. So if Clone he was lost... more, he would have survived. At least yeah, the, were... the first run. And it was close to morphing, too, actually. Well, that's unfortunate, but even then, Princey has taken the entire south side metal extractors. Clone's taken most of that island, or half the island. That's Manu exactly and Julian have not taken underwater. What Manu should have done, Manu should have done indeed. And yeah, the funny thing here. is, Clone has expected Manu to have done the same. He's looking for those metal extractors. But they're not there. No, See, go those LTs were a perfect uh, call. Oh, yeah, those, are, those were nice for Julian. But still, Julian just now getting a crane, just now getting metal extractors. Very close thing. Like, uh -huh. just now. Yeah, awesome scout. Yeah, as Anna Kadori pointing out, the game is over. Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough to try to pull out of this. I don't see any way they can get out of this easily. The only way I could think of would be... I mean, Julian has a lot of bombers. If they scouted this out, they could actually bomb out all of these metal extractors in one go. And there's no defenses either. So they could tear this apart if they knew it existed. Which I don't think they... No, they don't. They don't know these metal extractors are here, but they have the bombers to get rid of them, and there's no anti-air, or very little anti-air. Yeah, a lot of idle that, bombers. That income... Sh that income should be smashed up, and it looks like... Well, Jill, Julian has sort of... Well, maybe they have the right idea. I don't know. Army-wise, they're pretty similar. Yeah, that's true. And these bombers can take out all the buoys. They boys. they can damage most of them. They can't take all of them out. Well, they do a good job of... They <laughs> did, yeah, okay, them. they thinned out the ranks pretty heavily, so that, that was still worth it. Definitely worth it. It even uh, gives them a bigger army, I think, yeah. Bigger army value. Mm -hmm. <coughs> It's just the economy. So basically, a matter uh, of Clone and Princey Could you imagine now airdrops? I don't know why no one's going for them. There's, there's no gunship from it. anybody. At this point, Princey oh, just going checks. for airdrops the, the, as well. The Valkyrie is the, the, the third, mo third most fastest or the third fastest unit in the game. Only the Swift and uh, some other plane is faster. The, the, the Raider plane was faster. Raider plane? Is this radar plane and Swift are the only units faster than. Uh, uh, but no. Uh, oh, radar plane. Yeah, yeah, the Vulture. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what I expected. But I don't. I don't know. No one's. Do I don't know why no one's doing it. It's the entire thing. Yeah, it looks like they have not figured out. If they knew about the south section, I mean, they could take out most of the economy in like three volleys, and there's very little in the way of defenses. But now Princey's gone for an air switch. They have their bombers. They have their... Oh, I didn't even... I missed that. Manu lost their commander, too. Okay, that's... That's tough. I don't see any way out of this, honestly. The, yeah. Julian's bomb bombers... The bomb the duck. Yeah. Julian's bombers are doing a great job. They're getting a lot of value. And that's about it. Manu no, but it, has... This, this, this was the last successful run, I think. Life. Yeah, that's it. At this point, air control grows to Princey, and Julian kind of is out. They're repairing nicely. I mean, they have the air pad. That's the right thing to do. They did a lot of stuff right. They just didn't attack as well as they could have. They didn't Fight attack as regularly. On top of his base, and there is nothing to shoot at it. Nope. 
Just finally getting <laughs> hawks now. Oops. Oh, the commander's shooting at it. The commander takes out a hawk. No, that's good. Not that it really matters. I mean, there's one hawk from Julian and three from uh, three from Princey, and all the bombers are either dead or soon to be. On the pad, too. Ooh, not quite. And that actually didn't work. The hawk getting just out. Should crash into the ground at some point. We Into the water. It's the water and explodes. And Clone, coming from the north, now finds the metal extractors that were built. What few metal extractors there were. I'm really surprised Julian did not look at this. I haven't really looked at the north and south on those metal extractors to try to figure out if their opponents have taken them. <laughs> that was a massive oversight, especially Julian having air. They could have taken some swifts and just scouted around. And they failed to do so. And that would have been a massive blow if they managed to take that out, and then from there it would have been pretty easy to take out the rest of these. I don't know. Strange call. But anyway, the island belongs to Clone. Julian is going to try to bomb out as best they can, but that's it. There's really not much that can be said for this. It's just done. So, we'll be moving to game two. I guess Manu and Julian got to pick their map. <sighs> Maybe come catch her again. I don't know. What was the last map? I think that was the map that they should pick last time. Uh, Titan Duel, I think. Oh! Oh, yeah. Well, they could pick that too. What are they gonna go for, though? I mean, now they finally know about the metal extractor over to the south, but it's way too late for it to matter. Far too late. Oh, I'm sorry. Screen title was not referring to the right game. Game two. Oh, this is game one. All right, sorry about that. I mean, I realize there's not much to say, really. What what is there to say? It's it's over. Yeah, it's been over for a while now. So we're gonna be moving on to game two. Once Julian realizes it's over, I mean, Manu realizes it is over. Manu has thrown in the towel. Julian has not realized it's over yet. Or they have. They haven't done anything about that. But Julian has a very high elo. He's in almost two thousand. Well, so is Manu. They're both 2,000 yeah, elo it's players. Over 2000. They're both quite good. But. There, it's not helping them. Yeah, it's not 2,400. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Clone's elo is just absurd. But even then, this is the bronze match, so it doesn't mean everything. No, it doesn't. And there's the game. That's it. That is game. Sorry about the. Pauses in the commentary. There really wasn't much to say. It was kind of self-explanatory. The game was over. <coughs> okay, I'm apparently starting to get tired and delusional because I'm getting the stream titles wrong. All right, so we are going to have the next bronze match. It is bronze match. Sorry, I know the stream title says semis on game two. Whatever that happens to be. I don't know where it will be. It'll be somewhere. It'll be a place, presumably. I don't think there's anything that... I don't think there's any level in the game that simulates a complete void and vacuum. Um... No, I don't think that's possible. No, I, Hex Grid is kind of close, I don't but think then it builds the up. Spring Engine supports void. Supports the complete absence of anything? Yeah. Supports playing in not a space? Oh, actually, Common Catcher again. Whee! So this is... Oh, I just realized I forgot to put this on Twitter. Well, whatever. <laughs> Not that it matters. No one ever reads my Twitter. What do I care? Ay. Anyway. We are going to have that as soon as the players choose their map, whichever map that may be. Oh wait, wait, it's Comic Catcher, what am I saying? Well, I have it as soon as they choose to start. 
There we go. Choosing to start. Get that going. We're going to be on Comet Catcher, which we've seen before. Curious to see how fast this goes, though. I mean, the last map match was pretty decisive. And it's Clon and Princey. So it's going to be probably going to be kind of what we saw with Yogstoss and Drone last time. Not Yogstoss, but with the other players, the other ones that are in the finals. With Flipsip and Norm, where they're just slowly cr just crushing the map down. I think Clone and Prince are going to do that. Julian and Manu, I'm not sure what they're going to try to do, but Clone, and Clone is that sort of player. They're going to be more defensive. They're going to just slow... Actually, oh, I say that, and yet the last Comic Catcher game we saw, Clone went for the center cut. So anything can happen, really. Hmm. 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 You seem pensive. Yeah, I'm just wondering, wondering, wondering. I'll go. Thanks. And the game has begun. Thanks and vehicles. No air against two times vehicles. Cool. That well, okay. That is interesting. Princey not going for air, which I think is the first, well, second time after the amphibs. Yeah. So Kodachi and Scorcher coming out, so that's raiding coming in, and darts coming in. That's a lot of darts. Scouting. Oh, wow. Yeah. Five darts between them. They want to scout out very cool heavily. cool if they both uh, would have sent it five darts, so you get t ten darts. That would be scary. That'd be terrifying. I mean, except for just defenders, go, you just and then you go to defender trolling. <laughs> Pretty much, but darts, darts in terms of DPS are half of a dagger. Yeah, but they also cost half of a dagger. Well, yeah, but it's. I mean, you get the dagger power, it's just you don't get the dagger health. They just die. Move, move. I mean, a stiff breeze will smash them down. Little bikes. I mean, it kind of makes sense. They're, Tiny bikes that would fall over. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. Oh. Kind of fun to just watch them drive. But I probably shouldn't because that's distracting from the match itself. Although, admittedly, not much is going on right now. The player's just building up. Actually, quick leveler. That is a slightly unusual strategy. Given that Princey's gone for heavy, heavy Scorcher, though, that makes sense. Leveler coming back around to oh, defend. I don't know. Unless, <laughs> I think you can just overrun a leveler before Scorches. <laughs> I think you can, but the point is probably to buy some time. A second leveler is coming in behind there, though. The first leveler should be able to take care of about two of them. Nobody Three expects this Spanish Inquisition. And... Okay. Well, wow. Not quite two. Yeah. Almost. Almost two. The second leveler, however, is about to get in. And at the same time, levelers. You don't really need two levelers oh, against. Scorchers. Oh no! The factory's gonna go down. The factory is down, or as good as. But you should. Oh no! It isn't leveler status. Never mind. I, I called too soon. It was almost as good as dead, except the leveler. The leveler saved the day. Oh. Uh, now, if one for that first leveler, there would have four scores. Can be can get raided so badly by those darts, but Julian cannot do uh, defend his base and raid at the same time. Yeah, they went around behind the solar collectors. But that would require knowing what Princey has in their base. Like, they don't. He could also shoot at those constructors. That would be a better thing to do. But they're instead going to evade the constructors. And actually get into a great position to be able to, from there, harass, actually, harass the next constructor coming in. Although that constructor is building up a turret, which is exactly what it should be doing. And Julian is coming in to try to deal with this. Is it going to... Are they going to do so? No, they are not. Do they even see it? Yes, they do. They but those two back maxes are just free for taking. Yeah, there we go. Now we have some harassment going on. Now retreat, retreat, retreat. Ah, ah, he tried. They he had tried. the right idea, but he was too late. Yeah. 
Well, it's more that the turn radius didn't quite work in their favor. Yeah. The unit was driving away, but it started by driving towards, which does happen sometimes. And Panther coming in for Kloon, which is going to be a bit of a pain. But at this point, Manu and Julian are actually ahead. They're ahead economically, they're ahead militarily, and they have a bit more territory as well. Clone once again going oh, for the center cut. It's okay, it's okay. Well, Clone's going for the center. Pretty strong. They are not going for the sides. Princey is going for the sides, though they have corrected their mistake from last time, and are, they are actually expanding this time. Which will help a lot. But Mono and Julian are still going to have a hard time getting through this. Especially with Panthers against Scorcher, they... They need to switch up their army. Well, they are switching up their army. They're switching up to Slasher and... Are they switching up Ravager? Leveler, Scorcher, and Slasher. That is their army composition. The Slashers I can see. The Scorchers I can't. The Leveler I can, sort of. The Leveler can work against Panthers. Scorchers, however, not so yeah. much. I need to... <coughs> I guess everything else more than one Leveler. Out. In general, you just need one more than one Leveler. Just to get that first... I yeah, call Alpha, Alpha Strike, strike. To, to, exactly. uh, to, to kill uh, whatever you're shooting at. But there are no forthcoming levelers. I mean, Princey has, oh, Princey has a leveler. And Julian does not. Don't change the Death Panther. Nope, that's death. That is a lot of oh, death. Wait, I, he just got them. Barely, but it wasn't worth it. I mean, that was six, oh, that was six Scorches for two Panthers. That could Man have gone could differently. Have helped a lot there with those Slayers. I mean, the thing is, six Scorchers, given how much naked expand there is in this map, and given how snake expands going on right now, that would have been a lot of raiding. That did not happen. Also, everyone's ex everyone is accessing metal. Everyone, no exception. None of the players have gotten enough caretakers to work with their metal properly. There is a fusion reactor from Manu, which is doing okay. That's mostly to deal with the energy. Actually, that's the problem. Everyone's got metal. No one's got energy. Across the board, everyone's yeah, tired. It's the easy mistake. I think everyone's just tired. I mean, it's been six hours. Six hours already. I think so. If uh, nah, I don't. No, believe sorry, it. four hours. My mistake. It's been four hours already. Good thing too. I'd like to have some sleep. I have some stuff to do in the afternoon. Yeah. Also, have uh, somewhere to go this day. As do I, but that's not until the actual day. It's only six. In the yeah, morning. but <laughs> that's the other side of. Uh, I know. I know. Planets. Okay, well, it looks like Manu and Julian are doing a great job taking territory. They have a bit more than Clone and Princey. Clone not really going as center cut as I thought. They are actually going to the sides and consolidating decently well. But they could be raided out. The Slashers, not so much, but Scorchers came in to raid it out. I mean, does Julian yeah, It's nice to have Scorchers, but use them. Uh, I mean, Slashers, but just yeah, push them up forward. Shoot at whatever tries to get to that uh, think, halfway well, map. Fight mode... Fight most slashers will automatically stop as soon as they encounter a target. Yeah, or just manually, who cares? Well, yeah, the two. I mean, <coughs> just leapfrog them. Either way, they can kill things. That's what they do. Most units in this game can kill things. That's their job. A few of them can't, but that's because they well, yeah, build kill, stuff to kill uh, I'm not things. sure how, what, what the story is in 0k. Are well, there, is there anything dead, alive and so the robot, Well, okay, no. But everything's dead, and so the robots are trying to deal with what's left. Because they were programmed to fight... And that's all they do. So they just fight forever. It's not much oh, of a story. I got to be honest. But then again, the campaign hey, has also not been sorry. written. So maybe the maybe the campaign will ex will elucidate a bit more exactly why they were programmed to fight forever. And okay, with this many, do, do you see all these this the stumpies or these ravagers and these slashers? This yep, is a, that such are a strong idle. attack. That's good. No, no, don't go after the Panthers. Just for, for, forward. Yeah, that's not gonna work. The Panthers uh, are too fast. The Panthers are gonna evade. They're gonna. They've taken. They've taken what they want. The Panthers have. Well, they're about to retreat. I mean, at least in retreating, it's gonna force Princey to move forward. Sorry, not Princey. It's gonna force Manu to move forward. That is one thing. But on the other hand, Princey. I was about to say is. Holy crap! Princey's in a good position. I mean, Princey's position is pretty glorious, gotta say. I mean, they're in a position that they are they have not been attacked at all recently. They're along, I think, the weaker side? No, they're, they're on the stronger side. 
but they're also setting up the strong side. So Clone is the one that's likely to get attacked more because Clone actually has a slightly weaker area. Manu has been setting up to attack Clone. Prinzi has been left alone. I think Manu and Julian are thinking they need to kill Clone first and leave ah, Prinzi for later. Sorry, what were you saying? Yeah, and lots of excess happened. A lot of excess. Oh, it's still happening. Although Manu and Julian are... They could use it they, if they had the caretakers for it. If they had the caretakers for it, if they use the Strider hub, which they are. Okay, Manu's got that. Julian has almost got that covered. They've mostly... They're like, just barely not using all their metal, but they're still using a lot of it. Clone and Princey, on the other hand, they are... Oh, Princey's accessing. Princey doesn't have the caretakers to actually take advantage of it. Clone is not accessing. Clone is fine. But at the same time, Manu is just smashing Clone down. Clone going for the gunship. Are we going to see something tricky? Did he leave half his army uh, at home? Again. Sorry? He leaves half... He leaves the slashers at home. That... Probably not a bad idea, actually. Well, at least keep them behind. I mean, bring them up, but keep them slightly behind. However, yeah, leaving them at home... Oh. Well, if they were stopped, I'd say yes, because that would mean they're luring them with the Ravagers, they're luring the Reapers in. And then the, from there, the Slashers could tear them to shreds. But that's not happening. However, Julian is taking out the east side of the map, so Princey's going to have a bit of a harder time, but still... Princey coming with their Ravagers, deal with Julian's Ravagers, and Julian's Ravagers are... Well, they're defended by Claws, but otherwise, not much. But I think between Clone and Princey, I think Julian's going to lose their attack force. Yeah, pretty much. The Ravagers taking care of the other Ravagers, and the Panthers just providing a nice force multiplier. Forcing Julian to retreat and allowing Princey to get a lot of damage. However, Clone retreating away from this doesn't want to get too risky. But Princey, unfortunately for Clone, is being too risky. Throwing their Ravagers into the fire. This is not the best option. This is not likely to work. There, There's maybe a small chance it will work. Julian's commander, however, is moving up front. The Ravagers, they're going to go for it, and they're... Are they going to kill it? I think they are. And they... Oh, wow, just barely missed. There we go. Julian's commander has gone down. Though a little bit late in the game, so admittedly it doesn't matter as much. But still, Julian's commander has gone down. That's a fair amount of build power up front. But there's still masons. There's still quite a few masons, actually. So a little late in the game for that to be that big of a deal. Yeah, this is the point where Clon will just... Uh, do the repair trick again on those uh, reapers. Yeah, no, do damage, that we have don't reapers. take damage. Yeah. Repeat it until uh, you have a big enough advantage, and then you do win the yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, Clone has the rapiers. They can switch between rapiers and reapers, and cause yeah. our tongues to be tied. But it's still a good option. Unfortunately, the reapers. Well, I mean, for the rapiers, the rapiers not so much due to the flex AA. Yeah, there's a lot of anti air there. Those slashers, you can't underestimate them, but I think Manu and Julian are still pushing very strongly. They have the economic advantage. Well, no. I don't think uh, they have military advantage. Manu can hold uh, those Reapers. That's... Oh, yeah, the repair going on. There is a Dante coming, though. That might help a bit. The Dante is on the way. There's a catapult behind it. And the biggest <laughs> the thing... Are I mean, lined up uh, in the wrong way. I mean, if those Wolverines hit, they could hit the welders. They could hit the welders with the mines, and from there they could actually stop the repairing from going on. And the eastern side of the map, Princey is just barreling through everything that Manu and Julian has with their Ravagers, and then getting knocked back, and then getting knocked forward. It's just... Princey is relentlessly pushing forces over to the east side of the map. But the Dante has arrived on the field. Or very nearly. Princey forced to retreat. No one coming in with their own re rapiers. But it's it's kind of close. The Dante is a big deal. If that Dante goes down, if th that Dante is either going to take the game and win it, or it's going to go down, and with that, Manu and Julian will have very little in their military. Because on top of that, there's a caretaker, so not much is being built Ooh, in terms of tanks and vehicles. Ah, yes, it just went down. I just caught uh, that. The if they do not win with this push, they lose. Pretty much. They have catapult behind it, but they haven't built anything else. They, they've gone all in. I think they're going to make it, though. 
Those panthers are the only real risk, but otherwise... Oh, never mind, there's... Oh, never mind, never mind. There's a slasher's... Sorry, a strider's worth of reapers in the back. That Dante's starting to get confused with the air. Trying to get rid of the rapiers. But it's actually going to go down itself. Down goes the Dante. Down goes, I think, the push? I think the push has gone down. And I think. I'll spend 50 million scorchers because the army value is low at the point this moment. Yeah, Cronin and Princey are still... They are still knocked behind from this. And we see that Princey is indeed spamming exactly 50 million Scorchers. <laughs> Nine at a time. Well, they're spamming Infinity Scorchers. And Clone coming back with five Reapers. That is a massive blow. And I th Same five Reapers, yes. Same five Reapers. And Catabol coming in, which is going to try its best to stop them. But, I mean, at this point, there is a military advantage for Julian and Manu. Yeah, there has been all the time. And Manu has is also going for Strider Hub. There's a double Strider coming in here. And there goes the catapult fire into the forces of Manu. Well done, Manu. You have smashed yourself. Now, once again, oh. against the enemy. Because catapults are unreliable that way. Sadly. Though it's going to fire... Okay, it looks like about four seconds. Or how many? 20 seconds, isn't it? Uh, 30 seconds. You cannot, those just in time HLT don't work. You need LTs for this. Nope, especially when you smash up your own HLT. And sort of hit the reaper. Oh, process. let's send all the. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Send all those ravages up front. Don't chase the scorcher. Well, that's kind of unfortunate, but that is how it goes. And Princey with their Take rapiers. the damage and rebuild it. Sorry, which Ravagers? All the Ravagers that went after those two Scorches. Oh, over the east side of that, yeah. With Ravagers tearing them apart. That's going to be hard to deal with. I mean, there are quite <laughs> a few of them, but still. Oh, boy. No Strider Hub coming in for... Or Throne or Prince even looks at it. No, they're going, they're just pure units. Spamming out the units, and where is that? Because there was the catapult, which is now being targeted by the Reapers. But, ah, Funnel Web, and there was something else too. Something else had been built. What was it? Hm, must be catapult. Okay. Never mind. Still, Julian with their own Strider Hub going for an ultimatum. I yeah, that should work. You think so? Ultimatum against all those Reapers, yes. Oh, against the Reapers, yeah, totally. Against the Scorchers, though, that's what I meant. The Scorchers are the more immediate threat. And they are, in fact, coming in. Princey, do they have knowledge of what's going on? Yeah, they totally do. Or no, they don't, they don't. But they don't, it doesn't matter. They're just going to plow through anyway. They aren't going to find the Ultimatum, though. They aren't going to stop it. They might be able to get rid of the Caretakers. They might be able to get rid of the Strider Hub. They might scout out the ultimate. They're going to scout it out in advance. The ultimate is going to shoot. Oh, it's not going to shoot. It is going to be spotted, though. It does go over the shot, and it does take out the Scorchers, and the Dante as well. So between the Dante and the ultimatum, Julian does have a decent pack of Striders, but at the same time, there's the Scorchers coming in. And the Reapers as well, and really, Manu has kind of given up on Striders and looks, but they had the Funnel Web. And that's about it. That, that's pretty much their military right there, is the funnel web. Luckily for yeah. them, there's not much anti-air. Well, with the added bombers and the economy clone will have with, from the reclaim. Yeah. Yeah, with clones air switch. And then Scorch is coming in. I mean, the Dante can deal damage if it catches up. But it doesn't. Nope. The Scorchers will not let it. The Scorchers are going to go around the back route. Go on back, come back up. That ultimatum is still... That's still marching around, though. It's still a bit of a threat. Although, unfortunately, it doesn't have enough energy. Julian has no power to actually cloak it. Even 40 extra power. That's interesting. Doesn't really matter, though. Julian is losing a lot of power plants on top of this. And then from there, it's going to be... Pretty much Julian's going to fall, and then Manu's going to fall right after. There goes the Strider Hub, and the Caretakers will follow... Well, actually, the Caretakers... Are they, they should be the first target, really. The Strider Hub's too strong. Kill the Caretakers, then go for the Strider Hub. 
There's not even anything really being built. There's Stardust? That's about it. Being blocked off by the... Oh man, the worker's blocking off the path. But Stardust everywhere to try to stop the Scorchers from coming in. Not a terrible idea, except for the fact that it's not the only threat, and that Funnel Up is also going to go down. I mean, the Reaper's following up on the Bombers. The Bombers already took it pretty close down. In the same time... Wow, what's even hitting here? And that is pretty much game. Manu throws in the towel. And Julian, are they going to resign? Yeah, Manu already resigned. Well, Manu did. It's just Julian. That's the only question. I mean, there's one Strider Hub left. The other one was just destroyed. And the Scorcher's coming around once again. Princey has been just pumping out. How many Scorchers? 45 Scorchers. It's not quite infinity, but it's close. And those 45 Scorchers are going to be able to come in here, smash this whole, whole place up. Rip the factories apart, rip the Strider, and the Reaper is stripping the Strider Hub apart. I mean, the ultimatum isn't even enough, or wasn't even enough. It's just death. Stardust going down to the Reapers, everything else going down to the Scorchers. And that is game. Pretty much. Julian losing everything. And we're going to move on to the finals. Hooray! Finals! Oh, never mind. The ultimate is not <laughs> dead yet. It's close. Ooh, wow, that's, that is scary. Ah. 11.95 every 1.5 seconds. That's, that is terrifying. But the Dante and Ultimate have gone down. I think Julian has nothing left. I'd be surprised if they did. No, they got nothing. They have a handful of Wolverines and a handful of Crashers, and that's it. Yeah, Clone and Princey are... How have they not won yet? Haven't they, weiß ich nicht. Haven't they killed everything? What the heck? Okay. So it looks like it goes down, and that should be game. There we go, that's game! 2-0 for... Princey and Clone, they have taken third place. Well done.